You should be able to interface with an acquisition system to ensure this information is acquired and provided to you in more info in intense form. Maybe an information analysis system must be tied with a data analysis and planning and acquisition to make an effective one. So the number of interfaces you make is probably leads to success of doing such a thing. I just want to put a one diagram, which is uh, really something in our internal. This is why I'm just I'm just talking about here. See, for example, we make in our place a uh, number of imagery reports. And uh, this is how it has happened over a period of time. We tried to make changes in 2007, 2008. And uh, you can see the number of reports, the blue block. This is the way it has grown. And we have a projected figure in the first quarter. We have already done the projection of what we need to do. It's growing at this rate. It's like an it's like a steep curve of exponential. And if you look at the number of people, in fact, I've not put the numbers, actually there are two dozen people, about, actually to be frank, about 20, 27, 28 people. And that number has remained steady. And what you are looking at, the productivity, it is happening because of the, it's, it's because of building some nice interfaces between different stages to ensure the networking it makes it more sense. Does it really work? Is there some fundamental principle which is really makes it to happen? This is where I just looked at some of the traditional networking ideas and why it should happen. You know, one of the key ideas in a networking is if you are in a broadcast network, how do you assess the usefulness of your data? If more people are connected to you, like uh, you were like TRPs in the television or any other example. So the number of clients or people who look at it, the more the value of the data that you have generated. So the value of your data goes by number of nodes or number of things connectivity. This is actually Sarnoff's law, it is very old. Then sometime much later, when things were getting connected in 80s, Metcalf proposed something like this sort of a law. It's really linked to it for a telephone network originally, and it can also be used for any computer network. He was the fellow who brought in Ethernet into the domain. So he wanted to sell as many Ethernet cards as possible, and probably he wanted to make some money out of this. But then he sold the idea, if you connect the nodes, the more number of nodes, the cost of building the nodes increases the number, which is linearly. But then the value of the information that you put on the network, it grows as number of connectivities you make. So it is n into n minus 1, so it increases as the order of n squared. So at some point of time, you will start making money if you start building more and more Ethernet cards and put into investment, and so you will make a thing like this. Really, this is the fundamental idea of saying that explosion in terms of Internet utilization. And there are many people who criticize it today. They say the Metcalf overestimated it. There is another version that Metcalf actually underestimated it. I think this is a question of debate. But all said and done, there is a big explosion when you've got more things connected onto that. This is particularly true in transaction-oriented businesses. This is very much true. And in email or mailing systems, these things are very much true. One of the key elements you must look at it is a fully connected network. This is a key point. A network which is active and all of them are equally weighted and equally responsible to make things happen. This normally doesn't happen. So this is one of the reasons for when you make more and more connections. Connections means through an applications, through your functionality, then these sort of expected things to happen. And in the context of intelligence or information, like what uh, the police or the defense or any other people would like to use, it's not only the value is linked with how many connectivities you have, you also looked at time response of the system. Because an information loses its value after a certain point of time. So this is one thing which happens is an information is like, you know, what is the relevance of information of the time? If you assume a simple model like, you know, yeah, once that information is available, it's suitably good for a period of time. You can make it like a box-like function. And actually, it is not true. Very often in intelligence business, you, you need bits of information to be put together to get confirmed, and so it's valuable. So therefore, there is a small race time when many informations are correlated and collated to make it value. And then afterwards, it can steeply fall depending on the situation. So an echo like whatever you have in reality could be the second type of plot. This is what happens. So if the information is not made available in a network, at a certain point of time, it could become irrelevant. It could become extremely irrelevant. And this is the key for doing some of these operations of what you should do. Of course, there is a bigger idea, which I was telling the Metcalf, uh, the Reed is in his, one of his classic work in 2001, has said what Metcalf has actually underestimated the performance of the networks. It's not N squared, it's much higher it should be. Uh, the key element for him was looking at social networking sites. There was a reference to Facebook and things like that. Essentially, the key element in these cases happens, it is not that everybody is talking to everyone, but 
there are a close set of people, they interact far more intensely. So if you create the number of subgroups, the more the subgroups, the amount of value of the information sharing and network grows phenomenally. And actually you can show this goes as 2 to the power of n. And this is a phenomenal uh, growth rate. It's much higher than the order of n squared. When the n becomes significantly large, I think you become very, very big network. So if you just look at it from this angle, I think there is a classic story from a childhood. I think I learned your wise fellow won't, uh, was, uh, it was, uh, was really exhibiting his knowledge and intelligence to your king. And the king asked him, what are the gifts you want to have? That fellow, that fellow said, I don't need anything. I have got everything I need. He says, no, 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 you should ask me and get something. Then he just told, okay, you have a chessboard. He was playing the chessboard at a time. He said, the first, you keep one grain in the first checker box. Next one, you double this, double this. And if you give me these grains, I think I'll be very happy. That the king did not realize the impact of that. He said, no, no, you can ask for some gold coins, bags of that. We'll have it. He says, no, 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 I'll be happy with these grains. And he started doing it, and very soon he realized, I think he can never service him. And of course, all smart people at the end of the day, they get chopped off. I think this is what really happened for that man. This is what really is a problem of this sort of an explosive curve. And the internet, and this is, provides you this sort of a, a capability of doing this. This is the key for really making your progress on communication. That means the more connectivities you make, more connective groups you make, the successes goes up. In fact, if you just look at my plot, what I was showing is principally related to this. I think I can expand the Reed's law. I think that's not the point. The Reed's law explains like this. The yeah, same person may be shared. How does it happen in a typical... This is how it actually builds up. This is the way it actually can be done. The whole goal of doing something like this is to create more and more such networks in your environment. In fact, in a company or in an organization, how do you connect your organizational workflow in such a fashion? You build explicitly and implicitly such networks. Then your productivity multiplies and multiplies like this. I think this is a key for doing such an operation. I think this is a plot which tells you if you have two, two to the power of n, you go in a steep form. And of course, this is what it really happens. And now I think I just want to come to the last part of my discussion is something like how do these networks will really help? How do you create these subgroups? They can be done by creating relationships. And this is called semantics, really. How do you do that? In fact, essentially, why do we want all this? If you have got a huge database, you would like to ask you have very, very tough questions to it and complex ones which are not obvious to you and you want to find answers at a very, very high rate. This is what is a key problem of any system of this kind. And today, if you look at semantics, many of them are built through explicit tags or some metadata about the information that you have generated. You, very often, we would like to do this incidentally. That means you must create from the content the metadata. If you have to do many of them from the content, you need to look at many technologies like ontology. Ontology describes you the, the way you describe yourself in each area. So, for example, a highway can be called as a, in India as highway. Maybe it's an autobahn in German, or it may be something else, or even within this, you know, same district structures, even in different parts of India, may be called by different names, and you may like to see the same associated similar one. How do you do that? You need a data interchange formats, and of course, resource description framework. I think this itself can be a large part of presentation, but I think the key element is, if you want to put all of them, you need to put some of these tools get into your form, which is meaningful. There are some tools which are possible to do, but I can tell you that. Semantic web, I think people are talking from nearly for the seven, eight years. Hmm? Yeah, it's the last slide. It's the last slide. So a semantic web is something we are talking about for quite some time, and I am not very sure you will have such a semantic web in any reasonable universal semantic web. But you could create specialized communities and also an organization where some of this can be addressed very effectively and locally so that you can get really a semantic web belt for you then these are the essential and potential areas for a very big success in increasing your own efficiency and productivity, irrespective of the nature of business in an organization. Yeah? Thank you. Thank